Quick question for you this morning that has absolutely uh, nothing to do with the message. When you put your shoes and socks on, are you sock, sock, shoe, shoe, or are you sock, shoe, sock, shoe? Do you ever think about that? Uh, Okay, so, uh, like, where are my, like, uh, like, uh, sock, sock, shoe, shoe, where are you? Okay. Uh, Yes, you're my people, yes, okay. Now, uh, 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 you may be intimidated to raise your hand now, right? Like, is there anybody here that is a sock, shoe, sock, shoe? (laughs) Hey! There you are. Okay, y'all are, okay, we'll work on that. And absolutely, I, I just thought, I, I know, it's just one of those weird things you think of. I'm totally sock, sock, shoe, shoe. Who puts their shoes on like sock, shoe? We'll talk about that. We'll get you some help. Um, <laughs> um, another, another question is really quick. Like, what do you, like, uh, who are the uh, overpackers in the room? Let me see your hands. Uh, all the women are raising their hand, yeah. Overpackers, like completely just pack so much garbage that you, any underpacker here, like anybody travel light, anybody pack it? So we're actually, I'm kicking off, we're starting a series, uh, introducing a series this morning really called Baggage, and we're going to talk a little bit about it, but we, I have overpackers in my family, you've heard me talk about it. Uh, it's just horrible. Like, like Cheryl packed so much stuff. Like, if we're going somewhere for one night, it's like a whole big suitcase. Like, like why? And she's like, "Well, I want to have, I want to have options. So <laughs> we got to have options." But I think that we have all this. We overpack. My family is terrible. Like, I had two girls, and we would go to Florida, and it was just awful. Like, we had a rooftop carrier, and then we had one of those things that you stick in the hitch on the on the back, and and the luggage inside, and like going through the hills in Tennessee, like I seriously thought we were going to tip over because the rooftop thing was so heavy, like going around those corners, and it was just super heavy, and so we just have all this overpacking, so uh, here, you know, we, we have so much, so we're going to talk a little bit about this. Um, you underpackers, either if you're in the room, uh, if you could just see me after church, we're going to start a class and then require everybody else to come to it to figure out how you do it and how, you, how to pack light, but we're just talking... We're going to be talking a little bit about that. Packing too much is one thing, uh, but then getting to the destination is another. Like once you once you pack all that junk, you got to carry it with you, like everywhere, lugging it through the. Uh, you know, anytime we fly, Cheryl, where are my check bag people? Like, I can't, like, you people, like, no, we don't know. Oh, it's, you know, it's a check bagger. Oh, it's a... <laughs> check bagger. So you got check baggers? Yeah, it's free. Yeah, for that. maybe I'm just too cheap. I don't want to check a bag. But I don't check a bag. I pack light. And so we've got all this stuff, and uh, the, the effects, we just have all this stuff, loading it, the car is ridiculous, lugging it through the airport. And so I'm starting this new series, and we know that we're, we, here's the thing about baggage. Um, I don't know what, what instantly pops into your head when you hear that term, like baggage. What pops into your head? And some of you have stuff that pops instantly into your head uh, of stuff that you've dealt with in your past. You, you've got baggage. And the fact of the matter is, we know that we all here have some sort of baggage, but for some of us, that baggage affects our ability to live a healthy life. Like some of you just hearing that word baggage, like you tense up, like your shoulders got a little bit tighter uh, or your heart got a little bit heavier or uh, you, you just instantly went to a place because you know what that baggage is in your life that you, that you carry through life. And the fact of the matter is, I was going to actually just bring a suitcase in today and walk around with it, and as soon as somebody asked me what, what's with the suitcase, I was just going to pretend like I had no idea what they were talking about. Like, I, what do you mean? What are you, what are you talking about? I'm fine. I'm good. Like, just walk around here with a suitcase on a Sunday morning. If you saw somebody do that, you'd be like, what's up with your suitcase? And you'd be like, well, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Because in, in essence, that's what we all do. Like, we all walk in here... And y'all are pulling luggage and you're pulling your baggage and carrying your baggage with you and we're pretending like none of us have it. But the fact of the matter is we all have it. And, you know, I had a conversation with somebody this week. It was like, you know, I, I walk into church and it's, not, it's no reflection on our church. I think we have a friendly church. But it's just like I feel out of place because I know who I am and I know all the stuff that I've done and the things that I've said. I don't really feel like I fit in here. I don't feel like I fit in this place. And so um, I read a quote this week. It's from Ha Yin. I don't know who he is, but anyway, he had a great quote. It says this, sometimes the past should be abandoned. Life is a journey, and you can't carry everything with you, 
only the usable baggage. You only need to be carrying the stuff we have. And the fact is, the fact isn't that we don't have baggage. We know we all have baggage. Romans 3.23 says, says it this way, if, from a biblical standpoint. It says, for everyone has sinned, and we all fall short of the glories of God's glory. So we know that all of us in here are sinners. At some point in time in our life, we've done things on purpose that we knew we shouldn't do. And so we have that baggage. And so you guys, here's the thing about baggage. You guys met Tatum a few minutes ago, my grandson, and he is quite literally perfect, like, it, which most babies, are, really, when you think about it, all babies are, right? They're, they're perfect. They, they haven't done anything, um, you know. I mean, just look at him. He's just, he's just sleeping back there. He's perfect. But you have this, we all are born that way. We all, we all have this... It, it, Somewhat. I mean, he hasn't really made any decisions. He doesn't really have a whole lot of baggage outside of the family that he's been born into. So, poor, poor kid. Uh, but he doesn't really have any. He's perfectly. But here's what happens: we all started like Tatum, but somewhere along the he 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 hasn't anything really. But but here's the thing about him: I know he will. He's going to grow up and do bad things because we were born with this nature. It's why, you ha- it's why you don't have to teach kids not to share. They just don't do it. They're inherently, you don't have to teach kids how to be bad. They learn how to do that on their own. It's part of who we are. But here's what happens. We're born as babies, and we begin in this, in, in this in, we're born into this imperfect world. And at first, life is easy. People feed us and hold us and rock us and care for us and meet our every need, and it's idealistic, and life starts, and then somewhere along the line, we experience some kind of pain or hurt, or we experience something that somebody said to you. Um, uh, has anybody ever had anything, somebody, somebody say something mean to you when you were a kid? You know instantly what it is, right? Like, you remember it. Uh, I, I had, believe it or not, once upon a time in my life, my, I, I had color in my hair, <laughs> and it was red. It was kind of like Connie. It, I had red hair. And people would say to me, you know, I remember something. It was just a joke, and it really did. But I just remember it. People were like, I'd rather be dead than red on the head. You know, do you ever have that, Connie? Uh, they would just say stuff. You just say, people say mean things. And, and so at some point in time in life, somebody maybe said something to you, or maybe it was they didn't say something to you that you needed to hear. Like, I love you. I'm proud of you. I'm really super proud of what you've done. And so we carry that. We have parents that didn't show up at our ball games and didn't show up at, at stuff and didn't and we carry that junk with us. You did something to somebody else sometime in your life, and you regret that. You maybe were you maybe weren't on the receiving end, you were on the giving end of something mean and harsh. And you regret it. And you're like, man, I wish I could go back and do some things differently. I would. If I could change that, I would. But you can't. And so you carry this, we carry that regret and this, this anger that we have for ourselves of the way we used to be. This person I talked to this week was like, you know, she was just, she, it's pretty cool. We're, by the way, we're going to do baptisms uh, maybe, maybe next week, uh, maybe, maybe the week after, maybe both. Who knows? Depends on if you want to be baptized. But I was talking to somebody this week that wants to be baptized. And it was just interesting. You know, I, and I talked to several people this week. But one of the persons that I talked to this week says, you know, I, I did some things, and, I, and I'm a new person. They've given their life to Christ. They've changed the way they, they live. And like all of their old friends, they're like, they don't see me the same, and I'm a different person than what I was. And I, I, I don't know if you've ever done that. If you're that type of person that you're not the same person that you were in high school, and then you run into somebody that later that knew you in high school and knew the way you were, and you maybe have done some really mean things and bad things, and you want to go up to that person and go, you know, I'm just sorry. I'm carrying that. So whatever baggage it is that you have, you, we end up with baggage, and we keep accumulating it through life. We, it, it's not like you just have this baggage from your childhood. You, you keep getting baggage the rest of your life, doing really dumb things and making dumb decisions and not putting Christ for, and, and, and so you carry all of that in here and it affects every aspect of who we are. We all have this baggage. It may look similar to all of our bags, might look similar. It's like on the carousel at the airport, everybody's bag looks the same. You ever notice that? You ever pick up the wrong bag at the airport? 
It's happened. But uh, it, it may look similar, but we all have losses and fears and brokenheartedness and resentment and chronic stress and negative self-worth and guilt, and it impacts our relationships with the church and it impacts our relationships with God. It impacts our relationships with our spouses and our families and our kids and the people that we come into contact with. And so we have all this baggage. And so the definition of baggage is this. It's personal belongings packed in a suitcase for traveling. We obviously know that. But the second definition, of, according to Google, is this. Past experiences or long-held ideas regarded as burdens or impediments. It's junk that we carry with it through life. So what do we do with all this baggage that we have? And we all know we have it. You can pretend like you're not carrying it with you this morning, but I know you do. What do we do with it? What is the effect that the baggage has on our life? And I read this quote this week. It was interesting. It says, one study shows that having emotional baggage, pay attention to this. This is a psychological fact. One study shows that having emotional baggage stops people from creating a positive lifestyle change. According to the study, behavioral change can be hard to perform as psychological distress from life baggage can influence the ability to change. In other words, it impedes us from being able to change who we are. We get stuck developmentally in in where we're at because of the baggage that we're carrying through life. And so our baggage quite literally keeps us from moving forward. Um, Have you ever met somebody or or, or seen something that, uh, like they seem to have everything going for them in life, but then they like self-destruct? Have you, we've all seen that, right? Like I watched, anybody watch, I'm a football fan, uh, the Johnny Manziel story on Netflix. If you haven't watched it, if you don't know who Johnny Manziel was, he was was a standout collegiate a quarterback, athlete, uh, incredible. He won the Heisman as a freshman, which is, was unheard of. Incredibly gifted and talented athlete, but he just had this propensity for self-destruction. He had baggage from his childhood. It was an interesting show to watch, but as I watched it, I, th- I couldn't help but think of all the baggage that he carried through it. And so we have this, it becomes self-destructive at some point in time. So over the next few weeks, I want to spend some time addressing that baggage. And so for, for this Sunday, and I've, in the 10 minutes that I have left, and I promise, here's what I want to, I want to kind of give you some biblical perspective because we are in church. And so there's a character. When I started looking through uh, the Bible, there are these characters throughout Scripture that have a very similar story. They had a lot of things going for them, but then they had all of this self-baggage that they were never able to kind of deal with effectively, and it impacted their success in life. King Saul was one of them. And so if you don't know who King Saul is, he was the, he was the first king of Israel. Uh, before, before King Saul, Israel did not have a king. Uh, they didn't have one. And so the Israelites got together at some point in time, and they talked to Samuel, and they said, hey, uh, we, like, we want to be like other countries, and we want to have a king. It was really not a great idea. Samuel tried to talk them out of it, but they were like, okay. And God was like, okay, if that's what you want, here's what you're going to get. And so they selected Saul. And this guy had, if you don't know anything about Saul, you can Google him, but he was, he was born into a wealthy family. He, had, he, he was very successful from, uh, from a family standpoint. He had everything going from him from a family. He was tall and handsome, much like myself. He was chosen by God. He was chosen by God. He had a heart for God, and God chose him. He's like, okay, if you guys want a king, here's the guy I pick. His name is Saul, and he picked him. But here's the thing about Saul. He didn't really want to be king. He was like, I don't really want the job. And God's like, well, you got the job. Have you ever done that? I can relate. (laughs) I don't really want the job, but God's like, I want you to have the job, and I want you to do it, and I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to get... But here's the problem. All of his junk in his life derailed him. So here, let me read this story. It's kind of an interesting story, and I promise it's going to be quick. 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 20 through 23. It's just kind of a story about Saul. So Samuel brought brought all the tribes of Israel. This is when Samuel was, they were trying to pick this king, who was going to be the king of Israel. Samuel brought all the tribes of Israel before the Lord, and the tribe of Benjamin was chosen by a lot. means they just 
just kind of like picking, drawing names. Then he brought each family of the tribe of Benjamin for the Lord, and the family and the matrix was chosen, and finally Saul of Kish was chosen from among them. So they, they get together, all these tribes of Israel, they throw lots together, like, who are we going to pick for our king? Uh, comes out, pull the rabbit out of the hat, it's, it's the guy that God picked, his name is Saul, okay? So, it says, so they asked the Lord, where is he? We, we've picked our king. We know he is. Let's go, let's go find him, have this conversation with him, and say, hey, you're king. Where is he? And this is just a, kind of an interesting story. He, and the Lord replied. This was God's reply. They went to the Lord and said, hey, we picked Saul. He's your guy. Where is he? And the Lord replied to him and said, he is hiding. Where is he hiding? Among the baggage. That's what Scripture says. He quite literally was hiding in suitcases. Like, he did not want to be king. And so he was hiding in all of this baggage. He's hiding among the baggage. So they found him and drug him out. They brought him out, and he stood head and shoulders above everybody else. He was this incredible uh, figure of a man. He was, he was tall. He was handsome. He was strong. He had every character that you would expect a king would have. But he was hiding in his baggage. He had all, all God had equipped him. He had, he had provided for him. He had given him everything he needed to be king. But Saul couldn't get out of his baggage. He quite literally was hiding in his bags. More importantly, he was hiding in the baggage of his baggage. <laughs> and so let me explain. Saul had two critical areas that were hard for him, that were difficult for him. It was his personal baggage. Here they are. I'll break it down. I'll save you some reading in in 1 Samuel. The first one was this. He was fearful of what people thought of him. Know anybody like that? What people thought of him was paramount to him. Like, it was everything to Saul. He wanted to be thought of, and we all have that to some degree. We all want to be thought of well, but Saul really wanted to be thought of well. So much so that it created jealousy and anger and revenge. You read through his story. That was his first baggage. The second part of Saul's baggage was he was disobedient. He heard what God told him to do, but he was like, I ain't going to do it. I'm going to do what Saul wants to do. And those two things crippled him as a king. 1 Samuel 15, 24 says this, Then Saul admitted to Samuel, Yes, I have sinned. And here's proof, here's proof of his baggage. I have disobeyed your instructions. Saul knew it. He knew what his baggage was. I've, diso- I've disobeyed your instructions and the Lord's command. Be- why? Because he was afraid of the people. He cared what people thought. He was afraid and did what he demanded. Throughout the reign of Saul, we see how he listens to what people say and often acts in response with little thought. It was listening to the people's praise of David that led him to be jealous of David. And our baggage keeps us from being what God has chosen you to be and what he has gifted you for and what he has equipped you to be. It's because we are are afraid and we hide in our baggage. So my question to you this morning is, what baggage are you hiding in? Where are you hiding? What is the stuff that you're hiding behind? That, what is the voice that's saying, hey, you're not good enough for that? You can't pull that off. There's no way you could volunteer there. There's no way you could do that. There's, there's no way. What is the baggage that you're hiding in? Fear of other people led directly to Saul's ruin. 1 Samuel 16, 14, it says, Now the spirit of the Lord had left Saul, and the Lord sent a tormenting spirit that filled him with depression and fear. Because you see, when we have this baggage, we are filled with fear, we're filled with anxiety, we're we're filled with depression, we're filled with... God doesn't want you to live like that. You're, You're just carrying a bunch of junk that you don't need to carry. Um, 
I don't ever have a check bag. Cheryl does. And when we go to the airport, you ever have a hard time finding it? Like, we always tie something weird on it so that you can see it when it comes out of the carousel. Like, there's a pink ribbon or something. And so, you know, okay, that's my bag. I think the, the, the thing that's most important as we kick off this series is you got to claim your bag. you got to recognize it. you got to be able to identify your baggage and call it out. We have to claim it. We have to face, we have to face the baggage before we can deal with it. And Saul was never able to effectively deal with the baggage. And my question to you is, are you willing to identify your baggage? <laughs> are you willing? Are you carrying it and being honest about the effect that it's having in your life? That's a hard place. You know, the first step to recovery is what? Everybody knows it. It's admitting you have a problem, right? Right? We have to get to the place where we recognize the stuff that, whether, whether it was from our own doing and from our own choices, or whether somebody else imposed some baggage on you, and you had no control of it as a child, or as a spouse, or, or, or whatever, you've got to deal with your baggage, and you've got to claim it, and we've got to figure out how to carry it. When we acknowledge the baggage of hurts and hang-ups in life, we begin to work through them. And the first step to recovery, having baggage or issues is not the problem. Let me just state that again. If you walked in here this morning and you got something that makes you feel uncomfortable sitting in church, and you're like, I don't really fit here, I don't like this, I don't, I'm not going to come back because of the way it makes me feel, it's not this place that's making you feel that way. It's your baggage. It's the junk that you have in your life. So having baggage is not the problem. And quite honestly, some of it we may never be free from. It, it, it's not like we can, we can get in our brain and scrub our brain from some of the stuff that we've seen or experienced or, or had said to us. We still remember those things. So some of that stuff you can't just unload. You're going to have to carry some of it throughout life. It comes down to how much we're packing, how well we travel with it, and how much we're prepared for the journey, and, how, and who is helping us endure that journey. Um, I, I know I talk a lot about it, but we, some of you know, and you're probably sick of hearing about it, but sh I, I signed Cheryl up to hike like the Wind River Trail in, in Wyoming, and I know some of you know that already. We, we did like four days on trail. Cheryl was super excited about it. Um, let me just tell you, not. She was not at all excited about it. But when you are packing for that trip, you have a backpack, and you have to carry all of your food. And let me just tell you, you like every ounce counts. Like when you're putting it in your backpack, because we climbed 4,000 feet in elevation the first day and hiked 10 miles. And if your pack is 35 pounds, it, it's not fun. And it's really not fun when you go with Daniel and Beth Dice who run marathons for a living just because they're fun. Like, I was dying. Like, I could not carry my pack very well. I had a bear locker in there with a bunch of food. And let me just tell you, every ounce count. I only took two pair of underwear. That's, maybe that's more information you need to know. But like, I, and I wish I would have only taken one. Or none. Like, I'm sorry for that mental image. But, but like every ounce counts. And every piece of baggage you carry counts. It weighs you down. It makes a difference. It makes a difference who you're hiking with, who's helping with you, who's walking beside you. Like I couldn't let Cheryl out hike me. Like, I was sucking wind. It was not fun. Here's what it says in, in Romans 5.36 about how we carry our baggage. Because here's the thing about being a Christian and a follower of Jesus Christ. You come in here and you don't, everybody's like, oh, just lay your baggage down. And then your life is roses and you don't ever have any problems. And, and you go skipping through the daisies in the mountains. It, it doesn't work like that. You're going to have to carry some stuff through this life. But it's what you carry that counts and how you carry it. Here's what Romans says on how we carry it. We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials. 
For we know, why, why can we rejoice in that? Because here's why. Because we know that they help us develop endurance. Like, had I been better prepared for that hike, I probably would have been in better shape. But I like tacos, so that's a problem. But how are you preparing for this journey to carry your baggage? Paul is saying to the Romans that for we know they help, when we walk through difficult stuff, we're going to have it, and we kind of need it because it helps us develop endurance. It helps us know how to carry stuff. And endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confidence in our hope of salvation. One affects the other. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts. When we were utterly helpless, that was me at the end of the day one hike. I was utterly helpless. Cheryl was puking. It was not a good time. We were utterly helpless. And we reach that point in our spiritual life where we become utterly helpless and we submit and we surrender to Jesus Christ in our life. And we unload some of that, and he helps us carry some of it. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us as sinners. So he's given this this incredible free gift that we celebrated through communion today that we can take all of our junk and all of the stuff that you walked in here with, and you don't have to carry it anymore. You don't have to feel bad about that. You don't have to feel guilty about it anymore. Let it go. Let it go. Paul wrote, the suffering for the believers produces endurance and the ability to continue trusting God for longer periods of time. We get better at it. Last verse. Last thing about that trip that we we took was the weight. Clearly, like you weighed everything that you put in your pack. And uh, I had a spreadsheet that like I weighed stuff and then I knew exactly how much my pack weighed before I left. And then Daniel gave me a bear locker with like 20 pounds of meat in it or something. Here's what Ephesians 4.3 says. We have to learn to be able to travel a little bit lighter. Ephesians 4.3 says this, get rid of all bitterness. Some of y'all are carrying bitterness. You're bitter at the way you were raised. You're bitter at somebody that said something to you. It says, get rid of bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other and tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. Christ is our peace. He made peace. He preached peace. He gives us unity and peace. He offers a gospel of peace, and peace is part of the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, selfishness, self-control, and gentleness. I believe God wants to do much through us like he did Saul. He, want, he had great plans for Saul. He equipped Saul. You can read about it. But to be released from the baggage that restrains our worship, I believe God wants us to move out into our community. To do this, we need to get out from behind our baggage. We all have it. And here's the sad thing, and I'll end with this. When you look at the story of Saul, I would encourage you to go back and read it. It's, it I mean, it's, it's kind of a long read. In 1 Samuel, <clears throat> in your Bible, you can read about the story of Saul. And you look at all of his great qualities. God had started a work in Saul, but Saul allowed his baggage in his life to derail the plan that God had for him. And I believe some of you God has got an amazing plan for but you're carrying junk that's going to derail that plan. Let me read it's kind of a sad verse in 1 Samuel chapter 15, 10, and 11. It says, Then the Lord said to Samuel, I'm sorry I ever made you king. I'm sorry I... He, the Lord said this to Samuel, I'm sorry that I ever made Saul king. For he has not been loyal to me and has refused to obey my command. I just, it's just sad to me. And I wonder how many of us are going to fall in that same 
result because we can't allow, we can't face the stuff. We don't know how to unload it. We're going to talk about that in the coming weeks. Next week, we're going to talk about what that looks like to unload this baggage, how you start doing it, how you start giving that to God, how you start, how you start to allow him to, to change you from the inside out. I believe God wants to take your baggage. Philippians 1, 6 says this, and I am certain that God, who began a good work within you like he did Saul, will continue the work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. I believe at some point in time in your life, if you're here and you're a believer and you've made a decision to follow Jesus, <clears throat> he has a plan for you and he wants to do something in your life. He really does. It's just a matter of where you're going to let him and, and how vulnerable you're going to allow yourself to be. Um, and if you're willing to, to recognize the baggage. So here's what I do. Here's my challenge this week. Make a list. I, I'd encourage you to start, write it down somewhere. Put it in your phone. Put it in the notes of your phone. Um, and start calling out your baggage. You got to be able to claim it. Like, hey, I know I wrestle with this. I know this is something that I've wrestled with my whole life. I know this is some bitterness that I've carried since I was a kid. I know this is something that, that ticks me off. Slow driver. It's on my list. I'm working on it. It's baggage. I got it. All you people that drive the speed limit. I'm working, it's on my, I'm working through it. I claim it. I know it's there. My question to you, too, is have you overpacked? Are you carrying too much junk? You're going to have to carry some of it through life. But are you carrying too much? Are there some stuff that, that would, would benefit you just to say, you know what, I've been ticked off about that my whole life, and I just need to let that go. Is there somebody that you need to say I'm sorry to? Is there somebody? We're going to talk through some of those things in the coming weeks. But what is the baggage? I think you just need to take an inventory of your own life. I'm going to do it. I'm going to encourage my family to do it. Take an inventory of the baggage that we're carrying. Let's claim it. Let's get it out in the open. And if everybody wants to bring a suitcase next week and freak other visitors out, that'll be cool. People are like, what is up with these people? Bring your baggage in here and set it right next to my bag, and let's work through it. I'm going to stand with me. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much um, for reminding us, Lord, that um, it's okay to have hurts and habits and hang-ups and disappointment and anger and rage and frustration and bitterness and everything else that, that comes with this baggage that we carry. Lord, I pray if there's somebody here this morning that's carrying something, um, Lord, that over the next couple weeks that they will learn how to give that to you, that they'll learn how to lay some of that at your feet. And the stuff that they're not able to lay at your feet, Lord, I know that you help them carry it. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us to encourage one another in this journey that we're on. Thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for sending your son and creating a place for, that we can come uh, and, and fellowship with other believers. Uh, pray, Lord, that you would take us from this place, but not from your presence. In your name I pray. Amen. Hey, have a great week. All he's ever been